Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the Space Speed Type Tutorial and I've got my canvas here, 1920 by 180, full HD, got my colours to my right hand side. In fact this colour should be a different colour I'm sure. Let me just go ahead and check it. Alright, this is what the colour should be, sorry, it should be this red. Alright, so let's go ahead and get straight into it. The first thing is that we're going to do is going to select the text tool and we're going to draw some text and we're going to type in fast. Good, it's a bit small on the screen so we're going to have to scale this up. So it's going to hold control and scale this up. Right? But we want this to be a specific scale. For me, my values are 271.6 right? and um, there's no hard fast rule for the actual values of this but I want these values to be um, like this for myself because I found that these work the best for this particular size ratio but for you 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 can go in and um, and do some trial and error until you get for the size that you want and you're gonna see what I mean in a second so what we're gonna want to do is gonna have to do bold italic and I've chosen Musio Sans, great font. You want a font that has a bold or a heavy or a black um, italic to get the best results. And I find that Musio is a great font. Lots of um, options in its family. You know, very, very beautiful Sans serif font. I highly suggest it and it's free to download. So we've got fast here, a good. So what we're gonna do is we want to add some space in between these characters. Um, and in the way of kerning such that you know there's there's enough space to see the um, the speed streaks coming from each letter so what we're gonna do is just highlight it and we're gonna go up here making sure the text tool is activated our tool control box I'm gonna look for two A's next to each other one black one blue and that represents the kerning values right now it's zero we're gonna change this to 45 good and just have there and that's what I have here I think that's the best one for me it may go to 50 um, let's put it to 50 and these are values that you can always play about with your own project good so we have this here I'm gonna go ahead and color this yellow so I'm gonna press D for the dropper tool or you can go to the dropper tool down here I'm gonna select the yellow good and we're going to move on into the next phase next I'm gonna go to the Bezier tool or you can hit shift F6 I'm just going to hold control, use my middle mouse and scroll in and then I'm going to click, hold control and double click to end the Bezier path. Good. For the next step, I want to just round this and increase this stroke value in our fill and stroke dialog box and we can activate that by going to object, fill and stroke or we can hit control, shift and F to access it. And um, for the next point, we're just going to go ahead and enter in some values here for this stroke I want to enter in 4.63 and that is in millimeters great and that will give me this size stroke good next I want it to align the top of this F right here so I'm just using control and scroll uh, middle mouse button to scroll in right, let's give it a bit more length Good, and then we're going to duplicate it and align the next one to the bottom of this F right here. You know, and um, you can be more accurate than me, but I'm using eyeballing. If you wish, you can use the um, align and distribute properties here. I will use a bit of that today so that you can see how to use it. Good, and then we're just going to color these orange. Great. So we want one at the top and one at the bottom. Next. Just going to duplicate it and we're going to duplicate with control and D and we just want this to line up here and for this we are going to use the align and distribute values so we're going to go to object align and distribute oh error interesting I don't usually get those okay just had a little bit of an error there crash inscape crash all right so we're just going to use a line and distribute here. So go to object, align, distribute, and we're just going to align these together. Let's go ahead and just 
align the top edges of the, to the bottom edge of the anchor. This is the anchor and we want this top edge to align with the bottom edge. Great. So now we're in, do this. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna do the exact opposite with this one right here. We want the bottom edge to align with this top edge. Good, and that's this value right here. Align top edges of top edge of anchor to bottom edge of uh, like edges of objects to bottom edge of anchor. Oh, sorry, that's not this one. It's this one. Yeah, align bottom edge of object to top edge of anchor. Yeah, they can be a bit confusing sometimes. So I'm gonna select these two here. I'm gonna use the dropper tool and select this maroon brown that we have here. And that looks about right for the start of this part. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go and go to path and we're gonna go to combine. Uh, good, and we're gonna do the same for these two, path and combine. Then we're gonna go to the path effects editor or dialog box and that can be accessed in path or you can hit control shift and seven. Good, and you'll see a blank page, but you see also this, if everything's correct, you'll see this green plus here, meaning that you can add a path effect. And we're gonna add a path effect here. And we're gonna look for interpolation or interpolate sub paths, add. And what that will do, you know, that will add lines in between. I'm gonna do it for this also. And we're gonna add interpolate subpaths. And we see that's added five lines. Let's go ahead and put this to the top. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. So we have five steps. And it's ensured that it has five steps. And it's done a mathematical calculation to see that the, the distance between the lines are equal distant. You don't have to have that selected, but it is selected by default. Good, next we're gonna increase the steps. So I want this increase to eight. Good, and then we're gonna increase these steps for the maroon color strokes to seven. Good, good, and we want the maroon color strokes to be a different size. Let's go ahead and let's go to the fill and stroke dialog box with control shift and F. I'm gonna change this to 4.5. Good. And then we can just go ahead and sort of just arrange it. Yeah. In fact, you can give it a bit more than 4.5. 4.55. You know, and as you can see, you're gonna to have to play about with it a little bit to sort of get the effect that you're after. But um, once you once you have it then you should be just fine. And even if it's a case where you haven't gotten it perfectly, you can just double click it and we can see this blue line here and the two red lines. We're gonna to go to the path effect editor and we're just gonna select the trajectory option. And with the trajectory option, it's gonna pull this down. Good, such that it fits the shapes as best as possible. Um, it's still a bit fat. Let's put it to 4.5. 4.55. Good. And that looks as good as we can get here. Good, so we have our two strokes here. One, this stroke represents the negative space, and this stroke represents the positive space that we're going to actually see. And then we can begin to actually style these, you know, the way that we want them to be styled. You know, also, I'm gonna skew these two a bit so it matches the diagonal slope of the F a bit better. Right, that's about that's about right here. And we're just going to, as you can see, just duplicate this for all of these here. So we've got for the A, let's just match the diagonal slope. And for the S, good. Can leave this as is, and for the T, and let's match the diagonal slope of the T. Good. All right, next, let's go ahead and change this text to a path so that we can actually see what's happening. Lift it to the top and change these to, actually keep them to the bottom and change them to a path. So we're gonna go to object, path, object to path, 
and you won't see a change you know until we double click and we see each one of them are their own paths but they are by default grouped together so we can ungroup them good and let's give them a bit more space good uh yep we have these having a bit more space here and let's begin to add some stylation to them so first up let's change this from the path effect to a path and to apply all path effects you just have to simply go to path and object to path good so all of these are the, their own individual paths now and then we're going to go to path um stroke to path good i'm going to do the same here path object to path and path um stroke to path you know and then let's go ahead and play about with these now let's bring this in so we're just in node tool and we're selecting the outside nodes and just dragging them in you know as we see fit and we can just separate them with break apart so that we can edit each one of those individually and break apart can be found in path break apart good so let's go ahead and just add some stylation to this and yeah let's duplicate this with control and d bring this out of it and bring this even further out let's bring this in and bring these in leave this out and drag this further out too so and let's add a little piece to this one uh, and same for this add a little piece here with control and D good so we have this now you can just go ahead and select these now that they've all been aligned properly I'm just gonna go Control shift and plus which is going to unify them and we're going to union them with the F itself good and then we control shift and plus sign or you can go to object and path sorry and union and we have our first letter looking really good here you can give it a bit more space let's give the negative space a bit less Good, and we can go ahead and apply our gradient just to see what it looks like. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Good. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same for the rest of the letters now. And you know, mind you, you can do any style you wish. Let's convert this to a path. So we're gonna go to path object to path then you go to path um, stroke to path and then you're going to go to path lastly and break apart good so let's go ahead and play about with this and let's join this up here and let's just bring this back a bit duplicate it and carry it out you know and um, give this a bit of length bring this out a bit bring this in a bit and yeah carry these in carry these in oh if you're not seeing the option to highlight these and drag them that's because you have to have show transformational handles for selected nodes ticked and you can find this option in your node tool because this is all node work if you don't see that option selected um, it will be grey you won't be able to select these so you can select them with show transformational handles for selected nodes in your node tool tool control box area and it's this area here with the four arrows um, yeah directional arrows Good, so let's go ahead and select all of these and I think this is done. Uh, well, we can add one more piece here. 
and just gonna select all of these. I'm gonna go path and union and select these path and union and we can go ahead and add a nice gradient. Awesome. You can bring back the negative space if you wish or you can increase it. It's up to you. It's great stuff. Awesome. Good, so I'm gonna do the same for the S now. All right, let's go ahead and change the skew a bit. Change the shear or the skew. I think this is about right. Good, and may even have to increase it a little bit because we have some letters that are smaller than others. That's the baby knocking on the door. All right, so we're gonna to go to path and object to path, path and stroke to path, and then path and break apart. And we're gonna go ahead and just scale this in. Great stuff here. And Let's bring these out a bit. All right, so don't interfere too much. All right, good. So it's gonna go ahead and just see what we can do with these. Carry this out, duplicate it, give it a bit of push out here. Let's go ahead and just duplicate this and let's move this in move this into don't want it outside of the s let's chip pull this in pull you in and um, pull this in a bit and pull this in and pull this in change these to a yellow and pull this in a bit okay what I may have to do is convert these to paths also stroke to path object to path stroke to path and break them apart so that I can do them individually for each piece good and then we're just gonna go ahead and select these and unify them path union and we can go ahead and just shade them all with this orange good and um, you're gonna have to go through and sort of just mess around with things yourself until you get the perfect sort of look that you're after especially with this s because it's well it's an s so the curves are a little bit irregular are a little bit irregular okay and let's go to the last one which is the teeth so we're going to go to path object to path path stroke to path and path break apart to do this last one let's go ahead and just scroll this in bring these in as well bring this out Bring this in, this out, bring this out a bit, bring this in and give these some added pieces here. Good. All right, so it's gonna select these and unify them with the T. Oh, let's pull this out a bit. 
give it a bit more space. I'm going to unify these with the T. And yeah, path union and add the gradient. And um, yeah, I think that's we have our fast, our speed, space, speed, text in Inkscape. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. I don't presume to know all things. So if you had any suggestions, please add them. Um, remember to go to the node tool and select this here. Show transformational handles for selected nodes. This is important, or you may not be able to edit them as you really want to. Good. And yeah, be sure to subscribe and like. And until I see you again, get up and design a new dome. Later.